This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day everybody, thanks so much for tuning in, I appreciate it. This episode features a conversation with Grutel Kelsen from the Norwegian outfit Enslaved. Now the catalyst for the chat is due to the launch of a new album from Enslaved. This one is titled Heimdall and it'll see a light of day on March 3rd by Nuclear Blast. So we talk about the album, but the conversation is probably more notable for the thoughts or the opinions expressed by Grutel regarding Matt Pike and High on Fire when he toured with them, what some of the festivals are like, whether he rates them, like Psycho Las Vegas there in the United States, is it as good as Varken? Hear what he has to say. They played a show with Korn back in 2007, and also he tells me what he thinks of the Lord of Lords of Chaos film. Uh, amongst other pretty hilarious subjects. <laughs> I'll give it all away here now because I want you to listen to this one. Grudel's, like so many of them, got a great sense of humour, but it's rarely tapped into by other people who do interviews. I'm going to try to do more of that, actually, and, and give you more enlivening content, showing you a different side of the artist who can often come across very serious because of the nature of the photos and even the nature of the music. But really, we're all just people, and we all like fairly similar things at the end of the day. Before we get to the chat, if you're listening via the podcast apps, I have a tune to share with you. This one is called Forest Dweller. Of course, it's taken from Heemdahl. All you people on YouTube, you know the drill. I can't share music, so we'll cut to the chat right now. Either way, let's go. Hello, sir. Hey, how are you going? I'm good, and you? Great. Yeah, how's the, how's the calls, the Zoom has been treating you? Oh, was, oh, the, the Zoom is a little up and down, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least you're honest. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, uh, yeah. which, which country is, is the most difficult to engage with? I, I, I've heard through the grapevine it's the Germans, but you tell me. Uh, the worst countries? Yeah, as in, like, which countries do you find the journalists, oh, Cindy journalist types that are doing it from our man caves in our living rooms? Which countries do you find offer up the journalists that are maybe a bit less experienced? Maybe the interviews aren't that interesting, that sort of thing. Uh, no, I think they'll be, they'll be <laughs> they've been fairly good at the, <laughs> this time around. Uh, I have nothing to complain about. Yeah, tough question. I, 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 I won't <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be an asshole. Not, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> That's all good. Every, yeah. every single one has been has been fantastic. <laughs> there you go. Right. Props to us indie journo types who do this. Yeah. Well, look, it's 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 a bit of a cottage industry, isn't it? It's a lot of the time people who do this they don't have training, and uh, some of them might not even be fans, so they don't. They're not naturally curious about the work you're doing, particularly this great new album. So they might not have listened to it before a conversation. God knows I've heard enough interviews to know that I can pretty much pick up. I mean, uh, every every single one seemed to be really, really in, in, interested uh, and, and curious. And, you know, curiosity is a good thing uh, when it comes to music. Mm. I mean, what is music without curiosity? Plastic. It's nothing, you know. Yeah. So curiosity is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about the new album then. It's called, and I'm going to stuff it up, so you correct me on my pronunciation, uh, Heim, Heimdall, H-E-I-M-D-A-L. Heimdall. Okay, there you Heimdall. go. What, first of all, what does that mean? It's the name of a, a god, a creature hmm. from, uh, from the Norse mythology. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So continuing the the very strong vein of Norse paganism, if I can refer to it as that, uh, that you've long that you've long been associated with. And it's lucky number 16, lucky album number 16. I know you've got 31 releases overall, though. It's an amazing statistic at this point in time, given that I was around back then when you guys started. I think I got into you guys around 1994, 1995 through the pages of Metal Maniacs. And I couldn't comprehend back then that we that we'd be even hearing brand new releases from these killer bands, Bokniga, you guys, Emperor. Maybe not Emperor, they're not releasing new stuff, but they're touring. They're definitely touring. Yeah, the they point are, is, they're, they're, they're 
Yeah, but yeah, you, you're all still around. So it's notable for that reason. The album's notable for that reason. It's your 16th album and your 31st release overall. So about the music, though, I was listening back to it, and uh, we have had a, a couple of chats before, I think, and I've certainly spoken to Ivar before. And I feel as though this album is continuing the direction that you started on E, Utgard, and also Caravans to the Outer Worlds. Would you agree? Yeah, um, it's the same band. <laughs> well, well, not not entirely because we got a new drummer since uh, since E. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's a it's a continuation, uh, and like every new and slab state album, it's a continuation because we 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 hate the idea of 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 uh, going backwards and uh, going backwards in in our own footsteps. It, it really doesn't make any sense. So we like to. You know, look look forward uh, and always, always. Uh, I mean, the the utopia is always to make your own favorite uh, album mm. as a time being. Yeah, but I, I mean, and that changes all the time uh, from album to album as well because you we try to constantly open the musical horizon, uh, search for 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 a new interesting music to 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 listen to, and um, yeah, we we kind of. We're kind of constantly uh, gathering, storing in, in, inspiration mm. that we can uh, use with, with, you know, when arranging and writing songs. So that, that, that's what it's all about. Try to make your own contemporary favorite music. Mm. Like yeah. simple but healthy philosophy, I think. Yeah, and you know, I don't feel like I'll give you so I'll give you credit here, okay. I don't feel like you guys are one of those bands that cover yourselves like what's going on with Cradle of Filth these days, where the musicians are listening back to old material and trying to reinterpret that for the modern day. I feel like as though when we compare your earliest material, yeah, the production values have changed. I get all of that, but the spirit and the ethos are still there. But it's the the product itself, if I can call the music that, it does sound different. You've actually slowed things down and you've expanded your universe a lot. And I think you just you're just keeping on going with that philosophy from a listener's perspective. Yes, because I mean, we, we have never uh, felt any pressure for, uh, pressure from outside, and uh, I mean, there's of course people that would like us to to uh, to do another Frost album, you know. Frost. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, that that has never been our our main goal to to release the same album over again. Uh, not many bands actually do that well. There are uh, very few exceptions, like ACDC from Australia is, is one oh, of them. Yeah. They can do that. Uh, but I mean, Thanks not many bands are, are good enough to do that. So it's it's better to, to, to look ahead, do something, try out different angles, do something else, uh, keep it refreshing for yourself. Then you will be able to continue. I mean, we, 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 we could never like being. I mean, I don't see the point of being your own tribute band. It's uh, yeah, that's to me it's that's boring. that's pretty lame. Yeah, yeah it's, it's boring. boring. Yeah, 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 boring. The, the albums yeah. just become excuses yeah. to make money on tours through merch deals exactly. and all of the associated bullshit that tends to be pushed by a lot of bands these days. And I'm just saying it because it is going on. Okay, we know. I won't. You know, apart from Cradle of Filth, where it's definitely happening these days, not in the old days, but these days. It's definitely happening. But uh, b- back to the album, who did you decide to work with on the production side of things? Did you guys decide to do it yourselves again? Yeah, we did it ourselves. Uh, I mean, it 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 works, and uh, and, and uh, I I think we we have produced ourselves quite many times now. So it's about I think we have grown with our, with those ta- tasks and and. Uh, we have uh, our own studio, or as is not our own. It's like a, our drummer has a studio. He runs mm-hmm. a studio in in, in Bergen. So uh, the main recordings was done there, uh, except the drums. The drums he recorded in in in, in uh, another studio in the same in the same building, just across the hallway, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just to, it's a bigger room, uh, so it's better for drum recordings. So uh, he hired that room for to do the drums there, uh, but, but the guitars and the bass, vocals, keyboards, uh, everything else basically uh, is done in, in his studio. 
uh, and some some recordings uh, we kept from uh, Eva's uh, home studio uh, from the demos. Hmm. Some sounds, some guitars, some some effects, some synthesizers uh, are taken from there. And and the last recordings are done at uh, at my house. This building I'm sitting in right now, actually, nice. we usually gather uh, here at my place for uh, final recordings, and and, and that's you know. Uh, that's uh, some vocals, usually a couple of uh, guitar leads. We did some keyboards. We did some piano. Uh, things we, ideas we get when we, we we gather for the last session. You know, having beers and drinks and, and uh, make some food mm. and having mm. some chats. And and we bring a mobile studio and we, uh, yeah, we basically record whatever uh, ideas that pop, pops up uh, in the in the mind. Mm. And. Um, yeah, we did the, so uh, this time as well. So uh, we have done that uh, ever since in times actually. Ever since the album in times, we have done the final sessions down at my my place, and that that is cool um, because we always end up using a lot of that material, and it's always uh, the most. <laughs> Characteristical material because it, it, it's like done completely without uh, pressure. So there's a, there's a spon spontaneity to to yeah. to the whole uh, last yeah. re recordings and, and uh, it really really colors the the final result and and this time as well. Fantastic. And the intro okay. was uh, recorded uh, down here as well. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, I love the pine. Is this pine? Well, it wouldn't be pine, I suppose, in your part of the world, but. Um, what sort of wood is that above you there? Is that sound dampening wood that's uh, part of the roof there behind you? No, 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 no. It's just that's structural, is it? Yeah, yeah. We have yeah, we use plastic wood here. Yeah, sorry, we, I, I just find it interesting. Something you get this small insight into people's lives doing this, and I've got plastic. Oh, uh, this is Australia. just like, uh, uh, like, like my little office rehe rehearsal and practice spot up in up in the attic. <laughs> Yeah, you're like me. You got basic. We didn't, we didn't do any. Re we, yeah, <laughs> we didn't do any recordings. So everything was done uh, in, in the living room, really, yeah. and outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, what uh, the sonic sheen across the album is excellent. Who did you decide to master the album? Uh, it was uh, done by. Uh, it was mixed and mastered in in in, in Sweden uh, in a studio called Fascinations. Street in uh, Örebro in Sweden, and we have used uh, the same guy, uh, Jens Bogren. Oh, yes, uh, for, of course. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, the master yes, yeah, yeah. For, for, for the mixing, and his colleague uh, Tony did the the mastering. So the mastering was done in in Jens's old studio, mm -hmm. and the mixing was done in his new studio. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, me and Eva went over there in the beginning of April and, and uh, spent a couple of days there. Tried to supervise uh, the process. Best of as well as best of <laughs> yeah, as well as lying down on the on the floor, passed out drunk and stuff like that. No, 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 we didn't <laughs> do any of that. No, nah, you're a, you're a self respecting upright black metal mu or blackish <laughs> pagan Viking metal musician. There you go. You know who does that in this world? You know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What about uh, in terms of the, the songwriting process? The, I don't think that's changed for you guys in decades, has it? So it's you and I, Ivar effectively doing most of the music and you coming in with the themes, the lyrics, and also <laughs> suggestions around the, the melodies. Yeah. Um, it's like uh, Eva does the, the instrumental demos. Hmm. We'll send them over to the rest of us. Uh, I will listen to them enough times to get them under my skin, to, to kind of be able to dive into them. Then I will make a make a sketch uh, suggestion of uh, what to sing over it, and then we would um, either me and or Eva would uh, would write the lyrics. Then I will bring everything up to uh, our drummer's studio, and me and him would do the vocal uh, uh, the vocal demos, the uh, the vocal lines, the vocal melodies, and and uh, uh, yeah, record. Uh, yeah, basically record the vocal uh, lines or pre-recordings. Uh, we usually toss everything all over again uh, in, on the actual recordings. I think mm -hmm. we kept, yeah, we usually kept like a line or two, some of it. Uh, if, I mean, if, it, if it's really good and 
there's no point in exchange it so uh, or change it so I think we kept three or four lines from from the demo uh, vocal <laughs> demo vocal demos uh, on on the final uh, recordings actually mm. but yeah. Uh, yeah I mean that, that, that's normally the process so after we've done the vocal demos we would figure out where to put the guitar leads where to put the keyboard leads and then effects here and there so uh that's usually the process and then we will bring in uh, the other guys Hawkon and, and Arda to do to do the leads yeah it makes sense yeah, is, yeah. Is, do you lay is bass one of the first things that you track uh it's usually yeah well this time I had I had I usually play after guitar demos mm -hmm. and the drum I mean Eva will recall the drums on the only guitar demos or uh the finished guitar on, on some of the songs mm -hmm. and but this time I and then, then I would go, do the bass on the drums and this time I also had I think I had Eva's guitars and some of Eva's guitars already done before I went up into the bass. Okay. So I yeah. mean that that's I mean yeah. the the order there is not that crucial really. Uh, I mean we have even done a, a couple of albums, a couple of the last albums we did with Kato. Uh, we actually did it live in in studio. Oh. Uh, me and Eva and and and, and Kato. She did. Uh, yeah, we recorded. Uh, the basing and the rhythm guitar and drums simultaneously um and that, that kind of worked i mean it, it requires more takes usually yeah. but, uh, but i mean you are able to to kind of uh, get a certain live feeling a band feeling to it uh, and every everything doesn't end up being on completely on grid but oh, yeah. that can be interesting it's horrible. Well. yeah yeah, yeah. But for the last recordings, uh, Utgard and and and, uh, and uh, Heimdall, they have been done like separate recordings, drums, and then and then uh, one on the guitars and then bass and, and, and so on. Okay, yeah, and vocals, uh, yeah. vocals, and, and a keyboard at the end usually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you write on the bass? Because I know you can play guitar, but do you write on the bass specifically for Enslaved? I mean, I, I might be the worst guitar player in the world. So I know I don't, I ha, I can't play the guitar. I'm ridiculous on on on, on more than four strings. <laughs> but you got, I've seen I've seen Instagram photos where you got guitars hanging up in your living room. This sort of thing are they are they decorative? Are they or do you just occasionally bring them down after your fourth or fifth drink? I don't know the guitars uh, in my living room. They're my they're my uh, my girlfriends. She plays. She's a guitar player. Right, there you go. Okay, nice. <laughs> I never, I, I, I never fucking. I mean, if I play a guitar, it's, it's like my fingers becomes like becomes like giant hot dogs. I don't know. I have no idea to. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not, not a guitar relate. player. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as a career bassist, I can definitely relate to that. I play five string bass predominantly, and the the transition from five string bass when you play fingers over to the acoustic guitar, and I have played a lot of gigs that way. But by the end of the night, yeah. I'm just so frustrated. I'm almost angry, actually. I just don't enjoy it at all. So I stop, <laughs> I stop playing guitar and just focus on the bass these days. So I can I can certainly relate. Yeah. Hey, I want to I want to take a bit of a right turn because I've listened to a few of your interviews and I feel like as though people don't dive into aspects of your past that are really very interesting, such as in 2018, you toured with High on Fire and Matt Pike. You did quite a few shows there. So tell me about that. Oh yeah, that was that was a great tour. Uh, started in started with a sold out show in Copenhagen, which is pretty rare actually for for a band like Enslaved. Um, mm. uh, so that, that, that was an amazing start for the tour. Uh, really, and 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 really such a such a cool band to to tour with because we are you know we're basically really different, but we. Also, at the same time, we attract some of the same people, some of the same fans. Mm. And uh, it's a good package with having like two very different, but yet somehow similar bands on the, on the, on the same bill. So that was a really good tour 
really good turnout and uh, super people to to hang with uh, high and fire and uh, yeah uh, super what, 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 actually one of the last tours we did before before the pandemic as well right. and it, it seems like a long time ago and yeah I, I, I miss tours like that and I mean I miss, I miss people like you know Matt Pike, fantastic musician, really, really nice guy, yeah. cool guy, experienced, yeah. has a lot of great stories, and uh, just just a good guy. I really like him. Uh, yeah, I miss my buddy. Hello, yeah. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he listens to this. I've spoken to him before, and yeah, I was, I was shocked at how nice a guy he was. Not that I had any... Precon many preconceived ideas, I must confess, but I couldn't believe how nice a guy he was, mate. It was uh, oh, he, he, he's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love, I love that bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Psycho Las Vegas? It's one of the more recent festivals, particularly in the US. They're not that successful in terms of longevity, are they? Like Varken and Hellfest, which have been around for decades now in some cases. So do you, do you rate that festival, that Psycho Las Vegas? Because he did play it in 2018 as well. Yeah, we did. A, uh, it was a bit, a bit of a hassle for us because we we played a show like in the middle of nowhere in the, in Italy, like in a, like a small town festival. Uh, so we drove directly from <laughs> the festival in the middle of the night to the airport and went straight to Las Vegas. So we were like ah, jet lag and shit. And we were like a little bit fucked up to be honest when we <laughs> arrived in the. In, in, in Las Vegas, had some hours of sleep, and then started rigging and and and, and played a show in a, in a massive jet lag. But I mean, uh, it's it was really really different because like this was a, this was like summertime in, in in Nevada. It was like baking hot outside. I mean, you couldn't mm. be outside it was like I don't know forty five fifty degrees. Yeah, and uh, I mean. I live on the west coast of Norway. It rarely gets super cold here, but it rarely reaches above 20 degrees. So mm -hmm. that, that's the temperature I consider really, really warm is like, like 22 degrees. It's nice, so, 22 degrees, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I, I mean, that's my that's my com comfort zone when it comes to temperatures. So for me to walk around in uh, 40, that's just, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> so... Uh, and it was it was like an in, indoor restaurant, uh, and you know you were working walking around in, in, in casinos and yeah, super weird. Yeah, but I mean it, yeah. it was nice. I mean we 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 met we met some old friends. We met the Antoon guys, the Boy Boy guys, and uh, yeah, we had a good time. It was like uh, it was one of the coolest festivals we have attended in the United States, and those festivals are. Yeah, as you mentioned, they are really, really, really different from 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 Bakken and Hellfest, and then, uh, yeah, those festivals in in Europe that have been around for a long time and that have been hmm. constantly successful, you know. So uh, they haven't been for some reason they haven't been able to do that in the United States. I don't know why, uh, hmm. but it takes it takes a long time to build like a, a good solid festival uh, organization, obviously. So. It's 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 not easy. I mean, uh, for some reason, it's really hard in the United States. I think. Seemingly. Well, they're a bit like over here with that bloody uh, sound wave they had here. You might have played that, but uh, that was effectively something resembling a Ponzi scheme. So all the money from the year beforehand went into paying the bands. All the money from this year went into paying the bands that were here from the previous year. Not all, but uh, yeah. these are the things that you hear and. It seems to be something in the uh, the Anglo-Celtic sphere. I think they've got more success in England, I should say, but in Britain, sorry, in the United States, Canada, and, and Australia in particular, we haven't had a lot, lot of luck with with festivals long term, and that's very strange because yeah. they get patronised very strongly, but they seem to be like a <laughs> like a profitless boom, if that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, th I think like. Um... I think you need a German organization. <laughs> they, they, I mean, I mean they, they are good at money. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, they, they are good. At it. They yeah. are great organizers. That's no doubt at all. <laughs> I, yeah. And I think actually, I think Hellfest they brought in some Germans 
to arrange, arrange things. I think there's a, some uh, there's a strong element of a uh, of Germans in in the, the helpers organizations. So I heard. Bit of um, a Teutonic, no, fun, <laughs> Teutonic financial <laughs> acumen right there. <laughs> <laughs> We need some water. <laughs> yeah, yes. You must do what we say when we say. <laughs> so, sorry to the German listeners. Sorry, I know I've got none, but that's okay. No, no, what no. About... I mean, uh, this is, this is a huge compliment to Germany. I always yeah. like Germany. Yeah. Yes. I, I love the bands like Schmier from Destruction and Miller from Creator, although I know yeah. he's got Italian heritage too, so he's a bit of a mix. But you've, uh, yeah, the, the bands themselves, no, no complaints about the bands. And plus, we just had no, a no, so that was such an yes. important scene. I mean, uh, inspiration source uh, that Teutonic trash scene is, is like still very important to us. Creator, mm. Destruction, Sodom, yeah. great bands. Yeah, and like people. In, yeah, they are too. Halloween too. Yeah, God, God, here I go. Going through the list of all of some of my favorite interviews. Danny from um from Halloween and uh Kai from Gamma Ray and Halloween. Yeah, they're all good guys. Yeah. So uh we're only yeah, joking, yeah, yeah. gosh. People can't take a joke these days, mate. You know how it is. <laughs> 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 What about this one? This was a very strange one from your past. You played a show with you played a show with Corn in two thousand and seven. So going way back now, Ooh, yeah, did we play a show with Corn. Apparently so. It's it's listed on Setlist FM. I was going to ask you if it happened. It's certainly listed. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was probably yeah. That was probably a show we did uh, at a festival called uh, Norwegian Wood uh, in Oslo. I think I seem to remember that corn were headlining uh, that show we did. Yeah, yeah. It must, With, must have been that. Was it a bit like yeah. Marilyn Manson, where you couldn't look at the members of Corn? Apparently, that happened. That that when he played Soundwave or something I, like that, you couldn't stare at Marilyn Manson. You had to look away. All this sort of shit. Did the Corn guys insist on something similar? <laughs> to be to be quite honest, I had no interest. I, I don't even. I, I don't even know. <laughs> how they look like so i wouldn't i couldn't tell <laughs> I, I really couldn't tell who was who sorry i mean i'm not interested in in, in that band i, 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 I didn't even, i just no uh, no so i mean uh, no problem you can't stare at me you know i won't i don't even know what you look like so no staring for me <laughs> yeah, I heard that about Marilyn <laughs> Manson, but he's a he's a crackhead so you expect him to do that sort of stuff but the guys I mean, in court uh, <laughs> I've heard. I, I mean, I've heard several artists uh, making these claims. I won't mention their, their names, but I mean, we have been at festivals abroad uh, that we we have, we have gotten orders from like managers, like you can't you can't handshake them, you can't look at them, you can't approach them. And I said, I'm not going to do it. I fucking hate the band. Fuck you. Oh, <laughs> that's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's like, <laughs> but saying that to you guys with your long history, with your long history as a foundation band in a very important movement, the Norwegian black metal, Viking metal movement, to say that to you guys is fucking disgusting. Well, I mean, uh, I don't, I mean, it's, it's usually so absurd that I, I don't, I don't even get insulted in any way. It's like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to approach that asshole anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you. There's, there's certain people. Not, I'm, I, not that I would ever. I'm just going to pick on a band here because I do normally Metallica. If even if I was given an opportunity to talk to the guys, the only person I would talk to is Rob because I think he's an awesome guy and he's a great bass player. But I don't even consider him a Metallica member, if that makes sense. He's just playing in Metallica. The other guys I wouldn't even bother with at this point because you, you, you hear. I was things. actually watching that. I was actually working at the Metallica show in in Bergen. Uh, I seem to. I was me and a buddy were driving forklifts <laughs> at the show, so we were standing. Uh, I think it was like the day before the show, so we were standing having a cigarette outside our, our forklifts, drinking coffee, and then Rob actually approached us and uh, he asked us for a, a a good hiking trip. Because he wanted to exercise a little bit, and I just said, "Yeah, just over there, follow those and those signs, and you see the mountain there. There's like, it's pretty steep, but you'll you'll enjoy it. See you later, and good luck tomorrow." So that was it. Yeah, he was a cool guy, chill. 
Yeah. Well, he spent most of his life outside of Metallica, so he hasn't been in that bubble. And he's raised, he's got a family and he's raised kids away from that bullshit that they, that they can, you know, Lars carries on with. I, I don't know uh, how he I puts mean, up with it. I, I mean, so, uh, to me, Metallica was a really, really significant when I, when I was a teenager and I still, still listen to those albums I enjoyed back then. Still love like Kill 'Em All, Red Lightning, especially Red Lightning and and Master of Puppets. But I mean, that's enough for me. And, and Garage Days, we re- re- revisited. Uh, but 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 now and some songs on and Justice for All. But uh, it stops for me after that. Um, and I'm just not interested. And but I mean, I I, I really, really don't care. You know, <laughs> I I I I love my Metallica, and I. I will always listen to that. It brings back good good memories, and to be honest, they're really, really good albums. But I mean, I, I don't need anything else from that band, so I'm fine, super fine. Mm-hmm. And if people want to go to Metallica concerts and, and if they enjoy the new stuff, also perfectly all fine by me. Listen to what you want. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not complicated. No, it isn't. It's uh, the the issue overall that I have is with the algorithms, for example. So when Metallica release a new single and it goes onto YouTube and it's got the associated video on Spotify, the algorithm just thinks as a metal fan or a rock fan, you want to listen to that as well. So it inserts it into all this bloody stuff. And I I noticed the recommendations, it's stopped now because I I clicked unrecommend or whatever, you know, the process you've got to go through. But their new stuff's just terrible. And uh, I, I, I just... A question the value there's nothing you can do about it okay so I'm, I'm we're just i'm talking into a void here effectively there's something there's something you can do about it you, you can stop um stop streaming and just put on cds or vinyls True. There's no algorithms i, I do there. that with vinyl yeah i've got a vinyl player <laughs> i know you, you bang on point there mate yeah it's a really good point that one there it's when you got kids and you're out and about and you're doing things though it's really there's the streaming services they do they actually play an active role and um it's how I listen to your new album. I do have, a, a, I do have a, actually, I, I do have an Apple Music, Apple Music subscription, and ninety percent uh, of my Apple Music uh, use is like up here when I'm sitting right now, because then I can just easily rehearse to past and present enslaved shows, mm-hmm. uh, shows and songs on Apple Music and a headset. So I don't yeah. wake up my family, my kids. So that's what <laughs> I'm using stream. I'm streaming my own songs uh, and play along with them. <laughs> so it's a, for, yeah. for me, streaming uh, is a, it's like a practice rehearsal tool, like yeah. 90% of it. And maybe I put on a song or two uh, in the car. Otherwise I'm not, I'm not using, I'm not using stream. I'm not, I'm not streaming music in the living room. Hmm. I primarily just listen to, to vinyl records and, Every now and then, CD, but ninety-eight you percent know, uh, vinyl still. Nice, yeah, yeah. You're a big prog fan, yeah. aren't you? Well, I'm a big music fan. Uh, I don't, I really don't give a shit about genres. I, I think if if a song, if a, if a band give, gives me some energy, it really doesn't matter what you call it. But I mean, yes, there are uh, a lot of good prog bands, uh, especially, mostly, to be honest, from the seventies. Hmm. Uh, I like I, I like seven. The seventies are probably my favorite uh, decade when it comes to music, both hard nice. rock and, and, and classic rock, and, and blues rock, prog rock. So energetic and intense. Maybe because of the drugs. I don't know. <laughs> probably a lot to do with that. But thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Listen to the great yeah. music we've got because of that era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll ask you one more question if that's cool. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on yeah, sure. the Lords of Chaos film. What did you think? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen it. Uh huh. Really? Did you, did, you, <laughs> did you know that Jonas was doing it beforehand? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I have no interest in seeing it. I mean, it's like if you know something. I mean, if, if you know, it really doesn't matter what it is. I mean, if you are watching a show, a popular show, uh, about a specific thing, if you have a knowledge about that thing, 
if you know exactly what's going on with that thing, and you are watching a show about that, you will be annoyed because it wouldn't be right. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so I do. Yeah. I know, I know yeah. too much about the surroundings and the history about laws of chaos. Uh, so, so I will just sh- shake my head after like two minutes and turn off anyway. So there's no point for me seeing it. I, I just know how I will re- react. And it's like, no, it, I mean, I'm not, uh, <laughs> this, uh, it's, it's not made for people like myself. Hmm. I'm, 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 I'm not the target. I'm not in the target group for movies like that. So uh, it's not. It's pointless. I, w- I wouldn't. I, w- I won't see it. No. <laughs> mm. It would be like. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's very annoying uh, for, let's say, for a, a biker to watch Sons of Anarchy. I would guess that it would give him the same feeling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or or some other series. I, I don't know. I thought that might have been the case. Yeah, I've spoken to a yeah, few yeah. of you now that were around back then and nobody's watched it. And I understand there are reasons. I understand the reasons why you – like they're completely valid reasons. Yeah, if someone was doing a, a, a biopic about my, an aspect of my life and I was there and I was watching it and going, that's not what happened at all, yeah, it would take two minutes as well for me to think. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly so. but, but it does it does highlight something that I've already mentioned, which is that for a film to be made that had that sort of corporate backing behind it, there is intense interest in that period of music that you were an integral part of. Yeah, and um, I think for, for for a very good reason. I mean, there were not that many bands around in Norway at the time. Let's say there were 20 bands altogether, you know, in those days. And I think that some really good music was made and some really unique innovative music was, was was made and none of the bands sounded like one another i mean mayhem sounded really really different from 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 dark throne and mm. we didn't sound anything like immortal so and, and emperor didn't sound like gehenna so i mean everybody had like different musical background and 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 it was like all pretty much spread out in different parts of uh, of Norway, so everybody had their unique thing, and it, this was like uh, the lifestyle uh, of all the bands, and it, it wasn't copycats. It was like kind of everything was like kind of created from scratch, hmm. and it's really really hard and. Uh, it's actually impossible to to sit down and and, and recreate on on Cubase or Pro Tools in in, in uh, twenty twenty two. It's it's just not possible, hmm. and and pretty pointless too. But I think we should be. And there's something there to be proud of. I think a lot of good music was made. I think hmm. so. Oh, agreed. Yeah, and and Trim was also in your band as well. That's an interesting yeah, thing yeah, there. Yeah. More than a couple of a couple of albums and a couple of EPs and demos. So uh, yeah, you're. I mean, you're right in there. And I, I don't. I, it's not that I don't feel like you guys get. You're just you in, in that in that respect. But I, I just these days I've got to be in my bonnet. I spoke to Paul Ryan from Cradle of Filthy, old guitarist, about this. Uh, the metal media is just fairly. It's juvenile. It's naive. It's built on hits and clicks and advertising revenue. So they're forcing new bands in because that's the labels give them money for promoting the new bands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a bit of a vicious spin cycle that way. But we we are getting to a stage, I think, where bands are going to start to retire because uh, bands are fifty five. You know, the upper scale is sort of 40, 45 to fifty five. This sort of thing. So in the next ten years, I can see some bands are going to retire and just stop doing what they do. Unfortunate, it's a fact of life. Some members are going to pass away. There's some very interesting stories there, is my point in amongst all of that, like your story, like Trim's. There are some extremely interesting stories that need to be told, and I don't think the journalists out there are going to get to them all. Well, maybe not. Uh, I mean, yeah, we have been around for more than 30 years, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to last. It's not going to last forever. So, uh, yeah, we are... I'll, I'll turn 50 this year. Trim is, Trim is turning 50 next year. Mm. Eva is some years younger, but still. Uh, we're not getting younger, any, any of us. 
So <laughs> <laughs> they're like the Rolling Stones up there, you know, be playing well into your seventies. Maybe it could happen. It, uh, maybe if if I can sit down in a, in a, in a chair. <laughs> I mean, I, if we play music like Rolling Stones, it would, would be easier, wouldn't it? You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's also so, that factor there, isn't there? Or you could do the you could do the kiss thing and just replace yourselves with other members. So by the or Foreigner and Sticks and all of these bands that don't have any. The thing is, we, we don't have it. We don't, we don't use makeup, so we can't do that. Maybe we should just start doing makeup now so we can just replace <laughs> ourselves, you know. <laughs> start doing pentagrams and makeup. Yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. I always yeah. found that interesting when anthrax that'd be started. Super doing interesting. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's uh, are you are you plan? Oh, sorry, I'll make this my final question for you. Are you planning on anything resembling a biography, like a book, that sort of thing? Uh, I mean, there, there are, yeah, there has been discussions, but I mean, I, I, I don't think, I don't think it's time to do that now. I mean, we're still active. We're still, I think, we still make good albums. We're still vital we're still around i don't think this is the time for for a biography because there there's, there's more stories to be told and yeah, we, there are more type chapters to be added so yeah. i won't i won't indulge myself in anything like that at this stage yeah, no i okay. don't I, I don't i don't think that's fair on the on ourselves there are still pages to be written so no mm. I, I don't want to do that yeah, I hope it comes out. And, yeah, not now. Whenever you're ready, I just I hope it's something that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm sure. Yeah, when, when when the time is right, yes. But uh, I don't feel the time is right now, to be no. honest. So, no, yeah. there, there's so many of you, like the Sigurd or Sati from from Sata from um, Satyricon, Frost, even so many of you that were around back in those days. And to your point, you were creating things from scratch. It was didn't exist beforehand. Gen two black metal came out of nowhere. And when when you guys are forging that, it, it's become a global movement. And that's it's yeah, right. Just think, think about this though. Hang on, this is an important point. So I just want to make this point. It's one of the last globally recognized musical movements that ever emerged. Do you know that? Oh, well, you you are probably right, actually. Uh it's it's that's pretty, it. I can't think of a set though new metal doesn't count because it was a corporate thing. So in terms of like a completely something that was done in dorm rooms and and scout halls and rehearsal rooms yeah, yeah. and this and pubs and clubs and stuff, something that was genuinely organic is the key word. That's the word I'm looking for. You, I you think are that's actually, it. Yeah, uh, you're probably right. And, and uh, there hasn't been any uh, such arrivals of, 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 of new, uh, any significant subgenres after that movement, actually, you know. Hmm. Come no, to it's think a, of it, it's a it, weird it, fact. Yeah. yeah, it's a strange. It's the first yeah, time yeah, I've thought like of that. it, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You are absolutely right. I think. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, That's there you go. Well, there you go. One of the godfathers. Yeah. Just, we've just spoken to you right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I actually, I, the 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 final point I'll make is: is there the final point wrapped in a question? Is I hope there's an Australian tour sometime scheduled potentially. I guess. Uh, well, 2023 is going to be difficult because uh, we are pretty much fully booked, and mm. it's a uh, it's a long way. It's a long flight down to Australia, yeah. and it, yeah, it re requires some logistics. Uh, and I, I don't think we can make it in in 2023. There's just not room for it. So hopefully next year, hopefully. Yeah, fingers crossed. You, got, uh, you know you got fans down here. Yeah, of course. I mean, we always have a good time down in Australia. Definitely. Uh, I mean, the logistics, the, the you know, the, the plane tickets uh, have increased so much. So it, it's like it hasn't become any easier to do tours that far away. So, uh, yeah, we... Just have to hope that things will normalize a little bit uh, during the next year, so we can have a better opportunities to do so. Yeah, fingers crossed. Because right now it's really, right now it's really, really, really expensive to travel 
Yes, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah, well, may- mayhem. Just I don't know how mayhem did it, but uh, Di- I think you guys come down with Soundworks, don't you, Dicey? I think that's who you came down with last time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, might be, but either way, um, yeah, we got Emperor here next month, I think, and mayhem just came through, but that's it for now. There's some small indie acts, yeah. some of those dirgy uh, American acts that are coming over. That stoner death doom thing, black and doom thing. But uh, in terms of the big lights, yeah, it's, and unfortunately, the the whole ecosystem in Australia tends to revolve around the bloody you know not fest and all of that sort of stuff. Not fest is here this weekend, is it? I think I think it's in flames are coming down anyway with that one. I spoke to the guys, be one anyway about that but uh, if it's not for the festivals it's very i understand at this point in time it's very hard to get down but it will, we'll see how things in the global economy shift hopefully they do yeah, yeah. so that's uh what we are hoping for shifts in the global economy yeah, it's always <laughs> it really control, is. isn't it yeah, yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. unfortunately <laughs> Well, thanks, Steve, yeah. for the chat. It's been enlightening. I really enjoyed this one. Um, so uh, good luck with everything. I mean, you're already doing it you're well and so far into an outstanding career. So to your point about the book, yeah, I look forward to reading it, but I hope it's in 20 or 30 years' time after another dozen or so more albums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's well, okay. All right, cool. All right, thanks, brother. Thanks very much for the chat. Yeah, have a nice day. Have a nice day, man. Take care. No worries, man. Bye-bye. Catch you, mate. See ya. Bye. Well, there he is, Grudel Kielsen from the Norwegian outfit Enslaved. What a good bloke. I thoroughly enjoyed that interaction there. As I said in the introduction, it's always good to tap into somebody's sense of humour. And yeah, sorry, Germans, we had to have a bit of a laugh at your expense, but you know we love you. I've interviewed too many Germans not to love people from the Teutonic Nation, so please don't take any offence to it if you are so inclined to do that, particularly all you woke types out there, although I don't think any of you listen to my show. On that note, there are plenty more conversations just like the one with Grudel, or similar at least, over at scarsandguitars.com. Click on the podcast link there on the website and you'll be taken to a universe of chats with the members of Morbid Angel, Megadeth, Slayer, Testament. They're all there. Blood Incantation, yeah, spoke to Morris. Lots and lots of stuff. Black Metal is Sean. Yeah, we go there. Lots and we, as in the royal we. Me, I'm the only one who does this. And if you like listening, maybe you like reading books too. And I've written a book about my odyssey as an independent podcaster. It is titled, surprise, surprise, Scars and Guitars, Volume 1. Conversations from the world of heavy metal and beyond. Click on the banner that's on the website and you'll be taken to a marketplace of your choice and you can download a sample and if you do complete the purchase because you like the sample do hit me up because I want to thank you personally as so many of you know I respond to almost every message that I get on social media all of you are pretty fucking cool I've got to say I don't want to tempt fate but I can't remember the last time I was shit posted or someone said anything nasty to me it has been a long time anywho There's some more information to share with you about the book, but before we get to that, I'll bid you a fond farewell. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and I am the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast. Until next time, there's a very goodbye for now. This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew Mackay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel, and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock, heavy metal, and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought, I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Cold Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Ever. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the I, 
of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Superjoint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms that, yes, playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Borgir write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If, uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction to George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self-aggrandizing, complete piece of shit in there. I, 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 just, I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldiner. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was, he was very, you know, very open-minded and, and he was into having his, his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for, for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five and Manson gave me that name and um, I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favourite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book.